welcome to this special broadcast of CNBC Africa. My name is Trust Masrele, and today I'm joined by a man who needs no introduction, Pastor Ivan Maware. Welcome to CNBC. Thank you so much for having me. Tell me, who, who is Ivan Maware? Ivan Maware is, is a citizen of Zimbabwe, uh, a, 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 an everyday person. Um, just trying to make ends meet uh, and that's I think that's the best explanation uh, you know in terms of who, who I am and you have galvanized hundreds of thousands of Zimbabweans across the globe uh, around this flag campaign mm -hmm. what, is, what is it all about about the hashtag this flag well the hashtag this flag campaign is really the voice of the citizens uh, crying out for a better Zimbabwe. That's basically what it is. And it is a rallying point for all of us now to be able to say we can no longer be quiet. We can no longer entrust the future of our country to a small group of people that are out of touch with the reality that we see on the streets every day. And that rallying uh, call has landed you in cells. Y yes, it has. Uh, and I think th this is a realization that as Zimbabweans we have to have early on in this process that the, the kind of nation we seek to build is going to come at a price. And this is part of the price, albeit a very small price that I've paid because there are people that have paid much heavier prices uh, than me in, even in recent weeks. Uh, did you anticipate this kind of response from the state when you started a couple of months ago? Absolutely not. I, I think I it was surprising that the state would respond in this fashion because we viewed ourselves and still view ourselves as law-abiding citizens. We have not broken the law in any way, form or fashion. And when the law has summoned us to seek clarity, we have complied. And so I think the responses of the state have been somewhat surprising but also have brought confirmation to why as, as, as citizens we are raising our voices against corruption, injustice and poverty. And briefly tell me, I want you to help characterize the nature of corruption in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we throw these words around, but, but the world doesn't understand how big a problem it is when it is lending a person like you in uh, in, in trouble like this. How big is corruption in Zimbabwe? Well, let me, let me express it at, 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 at one of the highest levels in terms of uh, the offices in Zimbabwe. And as citizens, one of the things we're saying is that corruption in government is at an all-time high. It's just way too much. A good example is, and we have run with this campaign as this flag campaign, we ran with the Minister of Energy and Power Development, Dr. Samuel Indenge, admitted himself that he had mishandled public funds in paying a contractor almost five million dollars and I guess I suppose even more money as well but the one we know was five million dollars without following due process and his response to that was well it was it was a mistake and we don't think that you know this is going to be an issue we, and, we, and, and what was the response from the from other state uh, institutions well the other state institutions seem to be quiet about it and so this is why we got up and we said no we can't just let this go the same minister then had a vehicle bought for him for, I believe it was almost ninety-five or hundred thousand dollars, and this is at a time where the country is hemorrhaging. We don't have money to pay civil servants, but a minister can admit that he paid five million dollars to a contractor without a bank guarantee, and shrugged it off as saying, "No, it was just a mistake, and I'm sure we should be fine." So these are the kind of examples that are allowing even corruption at, at lower levels to carry on because when people down uh, you know the, the rest of the citizenry can see a senior member doing something like that for us people feel like well it's okay that's the way things should happen and we are saying no enough is enough we must stop that and we start with those in authority that's where we start to stop it and that's where we start to also show the example of how to deal with corruption and uh, i've been following professor jonathan moore's tweets uh, mm -hmm. and and one of the things that he has been calling for is that there are proper procedures that one should follow when they are raising these issues that are of concern to citizens uh, do you feel you could have used other alternatives other than the one that you're using? Trust, how long have we been following proper procedures in Zimbabwe in dealing with corruption and gotten zero results? This is what makes the citizenry in Zimbabwe angry at this point. The fact that proper pro procedures themselves are corrupt. We know who is corrupt. You can see who is corrupt. You have government ministers owning properties, owning businesses, in terms of value, in terms of asset base, that cannot be explained or tied down to the kind of job that they have. 
How come those are not being brought to book? So part of this flag is to bring government and government officials to account. Where did you get the money that you have? How did you acquire the properties that you have? And they must answer those questions. And government, particularly the head of state, has got to take action against corrupt officials in his government. And th that's one of the, uh, of the issues that people in social media have been asking around your campaign. They said, Pastor Ivan Maware hasn't come out attacking the head of state. Is, is that a correct, proper analysis? I, I think first and foremost, this is not an attack. This campaign is not an attack. We are a legitimate voice of citizens that are bringing up legitimate causes uh, or legitimate cases in Zimbabwe. Now, concerning the head of state, we are holding the government to account. And the head of state is the head of government, so he's part of it. So one of the questions that people on the social media have been asking is that why is Maware required uh, as far as addressing the head of state is concerned? And, and the question is, do you feel the president is part of this entire corrupt system? You know, we're, when, when we say we're challenging government, it, it includes especially the head of state. He is the man that is responsible for government and he leads government. So definitely our concerns with corruption include the head of state. And, and his entire administration. And so we, the, the, the Constitution allows us to appeal to him to challenge his colleagues or to challenge his own appointments concerning these issues. So everything that goes on in government, we are, he's as much responsible for it as, uh, as anyone else who is within government. Now you have uh, this huge following, uh, first online and then offline. The question is what next? I think, you know, th that question for me is a question that is already being answered. When you start to see what's happening in Zimbabwe right now, we have many, many, many people in different forms that are starting to rise up and to challenge government. Let me also say this. This did not start with us. This has been happening in Zimbabwe. It just didn't have as much traction. But it was laying a foundation. Up until we have gotten to a point where now the ordinary man on the street has just said, I can no longer wait for a political party. I can no longer wait for a regional body or an international community to come to my rescue. I must now start the process myself and whoever comes, comes to help me. And, and, but, but the question is, at what point will, are you going to say this flag campaign, this flag movement has been a success? I, I, well, it, it doesn't help much if we raise these issues about corruption, about mm -hmm. injustices, and nothing changes on the ground. I think we are already a success. Let me correct that. Because when we started out, our goal was to begin to increase the critical mass of ordinary citizens that can stand up and say enough is enough. And we stand right now today, and I'm so excited about it, at a point where there are a lot more citizens. And when I say a lot more, it's an understatement because there are hundreds of thousands that have now occupied a space that was previously unoccupied by citizens to speak up and to say enough is enough or to speak up and say we don't want this and this is what we want so already we've been a success now city some citizens they say Maware is out of the country and they feel like he has gone into exile what is the what is your current status I'm, I'm uh, traveling on business, pre-arranged business. It is something that I have done before. Those that know me will tell you that I have traveled before and continue to travel to do uh, different, uh, different exercises. I'm definitely going back to Zimbabwe. My family is in Zimbabwe. The church that I lead is in Zimbabwe. And it's my home. I did not leave the country clandestinely. I didn't run away. I didn't jump the border. I left officially. My passport is stamped and I have a return date uh, you know, into Zimbabwe. So we, we carry on. The Zimbabwean has got to realize that this flag is in their hearts and not in Mawarire. My last question, Pastor Ivan, are you considering getting into politics? I think that already we are in politics. I'm not going to become a politician. I've got to remain a citizen because this is where our power and our strength is. So what is going to happen with these masses who are rallying behind you if they don't have a face uh, where they can express what they stand for? I think, I think that no matter where the masses go in terms of their political uh, movement choice, this flag is always a rallying point for them to come back to or to still be a part of. And that's the beauty of it. That's why it has to remain apolitical, so that it can continue to speak for the citizen, no matter which uh, politician or which government comes into play.